Hey all you beautiful people and ink and paper enthusiasts, welcome to the channel. I have a pretty cool announcement and my first attempt at a bullet journal. So stick around if you want to hear all about it or take a look inside this book. Hey all you beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome. It is so great to see your smiling face. Come on in, get comfortable, and get excited because there is some cool stuff happening this month. Today is the first day of NaNoWriMo Spring Boot Camp. What is NaNoWriMo? Let me tell you. NaNoWriMo stands for National novel writing month typically this is a big event that takes place in november but they do smaller camps in april and in july <laughs> what is it it is a worldwide writers challenge that people participate in from everywhere from every age group from every walk of life there are tons of people that participate in this event it is for anyone who is wanting to write and get wonderful free resources access to incredibly helpful tools and get into the writing community and i am participating so the last two weeks i have been uh, penciling in planning planning, thinking, and working on this journal in preparation for NaNoWriMo. This is the first time I'm using a bullet journal for planning. I do use a bullet journal for my reading journal. You can click the tag at the top of the screen here and that'll take you to my playlist in my reading journal. It's a pretty cool journal. I have a Alice in Wonderland overall theme to it. It's a lot of fun. This is a Archer and Olive 8x8 square notebook. I have the unboxing video for this coming out in I think two weeks, but I really wanted to get this video out today. Um, I've been working on it for literally two weeks and because I was so nervous, I had an idea of how I wanted it to look and what I wanted to do, but I was super nervous to actually dive into it and put ink to paper. They are such beautiful notebooks and I didn't want to I didn't want to screw it up <laughs> so I was really anxious and I penciled everything in and I wanted to make sure I had a clear idea of what I was doing before I actually started working on it for each of the pages I actually did about four or five workups on just printer paper to see if I liked the way that looked before I came and actually decided on what each layout for each page is going to be. So I hope you enjoy it. It's re I'm really happy with how it turned out. Let's dive in. This is going to be my sort of workbook or rather my tracker for all of the NaNoWriMo's I participate in. I'm definitely doing this April. I think I'm going to be not doing July. I'm absolutely doing this November and I'm going to be doing all of them in this journal. So I have my first title page is just, this is what this book is for. And I'm going to write in my start date of April, 2023. And then whatever the last one ends up being, I'll fill in there as well. I'm thinking of not just writing a standalone book, but a series. I've been doing a lot of world building for this book that I'm writing. I've also been doing the scripts for a web series that I keep alluding to, but I'll give you guys updates to it at some point. But because of that, this April I'm writing book one. I want to have a list here to track all of those books in the series. And if I end up doing something pre or post this series or um, standalone books connected to some of the side characters, I want to be able to track those books here as I do them. So that's what my series list is. The next page I'm doing is a family tree. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm trying to track for this series, um, sort of the birth of magic in this community. And so I want to make sure that I don't screw up who's connected to who and where they come from and like origins of some things. And so I'm wanting to put this family tree here 
so that I always have that to refer back to really early on in this workbook. Now I want this first page to be, you know, gilded and lovely and feel like something special. And I use these paint in my shadow and bone spread in my reading journal. And I just loved the way it looked. And so I thought I would pull that in here to just have this, to just zhuzh it up a little bit. And then the next spread I'm doing is my index. And then this is the index. So I'll be able to find the pages for each book, for each camp that I do, um, to just be able to find the different spreads easily. It's an index, man. <laughs> so I'm going to be indexing the contents of this book. All right, the next section is going to be specific to this April's boot camp where I'm writing the first book of this series. For that, I'm going to be cutting away some of the pages, not to do tabs, but to the pages getting narrower, 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 and then coloring each one of these strips. And because I'm going to be cutting away paper in my brand new, very expensive notebook, I wanted to start at the last one first so that I knew exactly how much paper to cut off by the time I get to the title page for April. So we are starting with my milestones page, and this is where I'm putting in all of the little to big milestones. So the big milestone is I'm trying to get to 50,000 words. I'm hoping to get to 50,000 because that's what November is, and this is my dry run for November to see if... If that's going to be too stressful. This is a much more low-key event, much more fluid and open-ended. So I set my goal for 30,000, but my personal goal is 50,000. So the big circle here is going to be my big goal of 50,000. And then my smallest goal is start writing. Other things that are going to be on this page are like find a buddy, find a reading group, find fellow editors, form a community of writers, um, just things like that, that I can track through and, you know, write a page, write 10,000 words, just all kinds of little things that are going to sort of encourage me to move forward. These are like my milestones, things that I think will help me grow and progress and see better results this month. Now I ended up doing some of these outlining in glue and glitter just to make this page feel all that more magical. So my 50,000 words ended up being with like a gold shimmer and some of the other ones just have like a white shimmer. Then I'm flipping to the next page and I'm double checking my counts because you know, count twice, cut once. So I did that. Now that I've gone through and gone page by page, I've colored or painted each one of the edges so that I know exactly how much paper to discard and don't screw this up. So now we're working forward to backwards. This is my title page for April and I used my pigment liner brush pen just to write in April. Now I am not great. I've said this in many videos and to many comments. I am not an excellent writer. I don't know calligraphy. My penmanship is not fabulous and I'm just doing the best I can. Um, and so I just sort of brushed out this April. And yes, it's not fabulous, but this was like 10 pages of writing April just to practice and make sure I had an idea of how big I wanted it, of how to use a brush pen. And ta-da, that's the end result. I then used that stamp again and colored in those cherry blossoms with like a hot pink and a peach to sort of have some tonality to it. Um, I'm really happy with the way this looks. I'm, I'm pleased. When I was working on this, I have to tell you, I gained so much respect for people who bullet journal every month because every month you have to go through this theme, your weekly spreads. It's a lot of work. I'm only doing it for April. It's a lot of work. Now I'm going back to my title page and I'm putting in my quote for the, the beginning of the book. And the quote I went with, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside yourself. This is a quote I found by Maya Angelou. And if I am pronouncing that incorrectly, you can try and help me phonetically in the comment section. I would appreciate that. 
And I like this for right at the beginning because I've been holding on to stories for so long and they've been building and this world has been growing, gosh, since I was a child. And I just want to get some of these stories out of me. And this quote just resonated with me so much because it is so hard to have all of these stories and all of these characters and this whole world inside me and to never do anything with it. And I'm hoping that through these different NaNoWriMo boot camps and the big one in November, that I'll be able to start getting those stories out of me and onto the page. Then I'm back to my April page and on here I'm doing another quote and the quote I'm doing for this one is, the scariest moment is always just before you start. The next page is my checklist for all the things I needed to do before today, before April 1st. And that includes making this planner, plotting out my stories, uh, making a mood board for the various characters, making a playlist, doing, um, doing some meal prep beforehand so I can pull things out of the freezer a few nights a week and therefore get an extra writing sprint in. All of the things I need to do to prepare to maximize the amount of actual writing time I have to give myself the longest and the most amount of writing sprints in the month of April. So that's what this list is, is all of those things. The next side is my goals and rewards list. And this is at 10,000 words, 20,000 words, 30,000 words, 40,000 words, and 50,000 words. The next spread I'm working on is my word count graph. On the side here, I'm building a bookshelf with these great book stamps that I got on Amazon, and I'm making sure that I have 30 books that are going to be colored in every day that I write, and I'm going to have a word count written on the spine. And then on the other page is going to be a graph where across the bottom is going to be the, num the days of the month, like the number of days in the month, and across the the side is going to be my word count for each day. There's then a diagonal line that is doing a steady increase of 1,667 words, which if I do that every day, tracks to 50,000 words for the month. So in my sprint section, I will write down the date, time I start, time I finish, word count for that session, second sprint, same day, time in, time out, word count. And at the end of the day, I will tally up how many words I've done for that day and write it on the spine of the book. I will then add that to the number of pages I've already done and put that on my graph. So on the graph, I will see exactly how many words I've done in total. And if I'm on track on the bookshelf, I will see exactly how many words I have written each day. And then on my word sprints, I'll see exactly how many words I wrote in each sprint. That's going to allow me when I look back to sort of see, did I write more in the morning or more in the afternoon? Is this a better or a worse time to do my writing? Were some days better or worse than others? And just sort of have an idea for future reference. So, because right now I have zero idea of what kind of a writer I am. I have zero idea of how much focus I have, of what my days are going to look like, of how much I write at one time, how often I write in a day. And so I want to track all of my writing habits, good or bad, for this first attempt and be able to look at that data later to see when and where and how I can be the most productive. The last thing I'm doing is page tabs for my weekly spread. Because I really want to pay attention and be really intentional about my writing habits, have a really solid idea of how I'm writing and what my habits are, I am doing a weekly spread. In this section is where I'm wanting to go through and really chart my days and what they look like as a writer. So on each one of these little squares for each day, I'm going to do, did I do a writing warm up? It's going to be get up, have a hot beverage, make sure I have breakfast and get my kid out the door to school, get my brain ready for it. Now it's time to write. I want to be able to track my moods. Did I get enough sleep? Did I get enough to eat? 
Did I remember to drink? How many glasses of water did I have each day? Does any of those things affect my productivity in writing for that day? Or was I sick? Or my sprints interrupted by something? Did I struggle and how did I overcome those struggles? Just little notes so that when I'm looking at the data I've gathered in the monthly trackers, I can go down and say, okay, well this day I didn't write very much. I can go to the day of the week and say, oh, I didn't write very much because I, I had a cold or uh, my son came home early from school or whatever. And then I can look at what did I do on this day? How did it affect the next few days? Would I do the same thing again? What would I do differently to not have it knock me off my schedule? Just all of these things, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to have super focus for the whole month. I've never done that before, but I don't, so I have no idea what's going to happen this month. And I just want to be able to look back and say, how successful was I? How close did I come? What do I need to change in order to be more successful in November? The pros and cons of my brain and my habits and how to improve those. So that's what I'm tracking in this book. That's what this planner is going to be all about is tracking my writing habits. And if I end up doing the July NaNoWriMo or if I do November, or if I just set a period of time for myself where, okay, this is going to be a month where I just focus on writing, I'm going to use this journal um, and really focus on tracking that progress. Again, with these floral stamps, that ties in the color palette I've been using. That is a very soft, neutral thing, but it gives me space to just jot down the points of how my day's going and what has impacted my writing for that day. With setting up this section, I wanted it to be quick and easy, so I just used days of the week stamps. For the rest of the week, I just used a pink marker, and that's where I'm going to put my word count for that day. So here I used that peach color that I used on the tabs and on the flowers for my word count. I used that fuchsia color to underline each of the days of the weeks and as the center part of the flower, and just tying in all of those colors together. It's April, it's spring, and so I'm wanting a very simple, very pretty, easy to reproduce theme. And that's sort of what I went through for April. So here is a total flip through of this journal done. There is my title page with my first quote. Then I have my series list. The family tree is something I'm going to want to reference in every book. Uh, so I have that there. And then I have my index to be able to keep track of all of my spreads throughout the many years I hope to use this. Then there's my monthly. So this is my first NaNoWriMo spread of April with my quote page, my checklist and goals, my word count graph and daily counter, my writing routine and writing sprints. And my last one is my milestone tracker. And then I have my weekly pages all together with those tabs so I can keep track of them. And that is my book. This is the of that beautiful Archer and Olive 8x8 dot grid square notebook. It's called Tinseltown and I have the unboxing coming out in a week or two. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one. I'm sorry for that. At the end of the month, I will do a wrap up of NaNoWriMo and let you know how it all went. I have no idea what that is going to be about or look like. How it went? Did I write a book or did I get close or not at all? So yeah, look for that video coming out at the end of the month or beginning of next month. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about NaNoWriMo. If nothing else, you learned a little bit about me and the way my brain works. So <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and for sticking with me this long. If you are participating in NaNoWriMo, please Drop down in the comments section. Let me know your name on the website so we can buddy up over there. I am going by a book and broom here on the screen now. I will link it in this video if you want to track my progress on there. You can do so, I believe. I know that the people I on my buddy list can follow me and I will make sure that you can as well. If you're interested, you can keep track. You can follow along and see how I'm doing with, with my progress. Let me know your 
book ideas? Are, is this your first NaNoWriMo? Have you ever heard of it? Are you participating? What are you writing? I just want to hear all about your experiences with this, even if it's no experience at all. Drop it all in the comments below. Let me know what's going on with you. I would love to hear it. And I would love to follow you over on the website. I may also be doing updates on Instagram. I have no idea. So you can follow me there. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Good luck all of my writing buddies who are participating in this camp. I wish you the best of luck. And thank you guys so much for watching this video and joining me on this journey. I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.